thing every two weeks where we, we have a, it's called Peak Pals. So we just try and do something in small groups. So we try to do stuff away from soccer, but um, we're going to do soccer things like go for coffees and play other sports, table tennis or whatever. Sometimes we go walk dogs together just away, just trying to do stuff away from the game. You know? Awesome, fun. But we found ourselves very much in the game. <laughs> so um, this might be the last chance we got to talk to you. So this is going to be kind That's of a season week. I know it is. Long season come to an end, but yeah. all good things, you know. So a ro kind of a roller coaster season. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. What have you learned about the program, about the squad, about Indiana? Well, about about the program. It's a program that's got all the potential. About the squad, I mean, we're a team that can compete with some of the, the elite of the elite, even where we're at. Um, you know, I was listening to Deion Sanders with Colorado, and he was talking about, you know, we're not where we used to be, but we're better than where we, you know, we're not where we're, we're not where we used to be, but we're not where we want to be. And I feel that's very true as to where we're at. I think that people are like, well, what did you expect for year one? And I generally thought we could have made the tournament. We didn't talk about it, but I felt like we could with the girls that we brought here. Um, and I felt we could have been a top 25 program at some point in the season with the rankings. And we're as high as 50, and you're a couple of games away from, from being in the tournament. And so, you know, next year, certainly that'll be the, that'll be the, the message to them. You know, so I think year one, having not won a Big Ten game in two years, We've won three, tied one, and could have won some others. Absolutely. So I think next year we have to say, and yeah, next year we've got the tournament, and that needs to be the standard. And so, and then amongst that, we're still going to hunt for that top 25. And then in terms of Indiana, the weather's amazing. <laughs> and I, I, I bashed the weather when I first got here because I got here in winter, but the summers have been great. It's barely rained, which it always rains in Mobile. It's never usually 80 here right now. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I don't know what's happening right now, but it, from my opinion, it's great weather. You mentioned you didn't talk to them at all about the tournament. Any reason for that? Any reasons for that? Yeah, because because I feel like that when you haven't won a Big Ten game in two years, and I come in and say, well, we're going to go to the tournament. As soon as we lose, maybe the first game, then you start questioning. So I wanted us to be in. We could always still be a top twenty-five team. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine like throughout the season, you're, you're one or two wins away. Like look at Rutgers. Rutgers pushed us up fifteen spots. Exactly. So I think it's always achievable. Like we play Michigan State. I think they're ranked twenty-fourth in the country. You know, like that's a huge win if you can if you go in. And I think that leaving the program, it, like we started the season at two or nine in the RPI. Right now we're at eighty-four. That's one of the lowest RPIs this year for us. But we started at two or nine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we can get our, if we can beat Michigan State and be up there in and around the 60s when we start next year, it's a, it's a good place to start. You know, it's a good place to start. I mean, the first time the rankings came out, we went from two or nine to 52. <laughs> so it's a huge, it's a huge step in the right direction. But, you know, like we said, we're not. It's a much of big improvements in a lot of different areas, but we're not where we, where we want to be. Absolutely. Uh, what are you looking for out of the team against Michigan State this weekend, this final game of the season? Well, you know, we weren't a good representation of ourselves and against Michigan, but today we tried to have a bit of fun and be competitive, and I want them to compete. Against Rutgers, we competed. Mm -hmm. Against, uh, I mean, even UCLA, first half, like we pieced some things together this year that have been really good, but just 90 minutes, just fight. And again, what are we playing for? We're playing to finish the season with the highest RPI that we can to help us for next year. You know, and it would take a miracle for us to get the national tournament now. And I think the goal was to beat Michigan, go into this game knowing if we won it, we could get an at large mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, for the tournament. Um, you know, so that one was gone now, where we are where we are, but. Just a bit of pride, you know, a bit of pride and see if we can finish the, the season this, it, on a high, especially for all these seniors that have been with us. And we have 10 of them, you know, and they've, they've all been fantastic, never given up and trusted in us. So we're, we're going to give everyone we've got Sunday. Absolutely. Um, what do you think this team, this program's kind of identity is, could be moving forward? That's a good question. So, I mean, the, the biggest thing is when we got here was just the change of perception of the program. And I think that. I mean, we've looked at all the losses that we've had. There's eight of them. Seven of those losses we've lost in the second half. So either at halftime we've come in winning the game or at halftime we've come in tied and we've either gone on to lose or go on to tie the game and there was never a, a peak in our performance in the second half. So, you know, we're looking into everything right now in terms of, like, why is that what's going on? And could it be physical? Could it be the way we're training? Are we not training? But, but then there's also the mental piece. And so, you know, how do we want this programme to be perceived? We want to be perceived as, as, as winners, as competitors. Um, and no longer the easy game in the in the, the big ten you know we i think we've turned a few heads this year and and you know i hope we have but but we're not where we want to be and we're not where we're going to be and so i think for me i just want i want teams to respect these young ladies and i want these girls to be competing 
uh, and, and amongst the elite, the elite of the elite. Like our goal is to send girls pros uh, to, to the pros, and so we have ten girls here, and we're hoping that we can send the majority of them off into the pros. And so, you know, that's the that's the goal. Always has been the goal, and and hopefully we get a few of them out the door with a degree and an opportunity to go in and play at the next level. Absolutely. Have you been able to identify any kind of building blocks, any underclassmen, younger players that are could be leaders going forward? Yeah, I mean. I, all of them right now. I mean, you've got uh, Kayla Burish. The players said yeah, too. Kayla Burish. Kayla Burish is, is <clears throat> somebody that's, that's on that kind of leadership group. But, but there, there's so many. I mean, we have so many players here, and, and even there, you know, there, there's some transfers that, that could could. I didn't want to do it year one. Have a transfer as a captain. I didn't want players that have been here, but, but ultimately we need we need players that are competitors. And look, Abby Roy is one of the best captains that that, that I ever I ever coached. Um, She's somebody that's very true to the, 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 what it takes to be a, a boiler maker. She she loves the program. She fights. She gives a hundred percent all the time. Has never questioned our crazy tactics and <laughs> is trusted in us. But she's a really good representation. So that's a gold standard for me because uh, she's been somebody when we got here as a captain. Um, but so yeah, so we need some more Abby Royce. There's no nobody out there that are, is quite ready to be that player yet. But they're going to grow into it for sure. What do you do? You have any plans for the transfer portal at all for the off season stuff oh, yeah. like that? Oh yeah, yeah. we're, we're ready. On it? We're ready to go. I mean, we graduate ten. Yeah, right. We graduate ten. And so we've been very fortunate with this roster cap that, that we've managed to sign some players that weren't available when we first got here. So there's three players. We've got a transfer. Well, not a transfer, but a freshman was let go from Clemson. A freshman was let go from Penn State. A freshman was let go from Michigan State. And we've managed to get all three of them, and they didn't exist when we first got here. And now we've managed to commit those kids as good, but you know. Look, take a look at some of the best programs in the country right now. They all have transfers. It's just part of the game now. And so for us, we're going to get in the portal, hopefully pick up some some graduate students and players that we know that can give us another year because we are quite top heavy for the 26 class. That's where all our efforts went to when we got here for that 2026 class because we had the time to recruit them. So, mm -hmm. uh, But we're, we're going to hit the portal like everybody else and we're going to try and find some, find some girls that are, are looking for an opportunity to be part of something that's, that's special well uh yeah just one coach for you one question for your book coach um what does the offseason look like for you and your coaching staff and then also like for your players what they we are gonna we are gonna 